Hey, Greater Deliverance, good morning. It's Pastor Mark, and as you can see, I'm not here today, but I want to take this time to welcome all of our guests. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us here today. As we often say here at Greater Deliverance, great things are happening at Greater Deliverance. Because you chose to worship with us today, I believe something great is going to happen in your life. Today we're continuing a sermon series that we started on last week entitled A Godly Pursuit, founded in the book of Judges. And today I'm excited to present to you the second installment of our sermon series. And even though I'm not there, you are in great hands because today presenting the second half of our sermon series is our own Char niece, Char Love Jones. She's going to come. She's going to share. You're going to be blessed. And so do me a favor. Come on. Stand on your feet. Put your hands together. And let's receive our own Charlene Jones. for coming and joining us. Whew. All right. All right. God, take over, take over, take over. All right. Um, so, as I am, Pastor Mark says, um, great things are happening here at Greater Deliverance. All right. Um, I'm going to, if we can have the children line up to my left, to your right, so I can relinquish them for their service. Um, and as they are lining up, can we please point our hands to them so we can pray for them? Yes, thank God, thank God, yes. God, we thank you for the greater the children of greater deliverance, Lord. We pray that as they go um, in the back that you impart to them what they need to learn, dear Father God, so they can go out into the world and do your works, God. We just thank you and we protect them, we cover them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You all may sit. You all may sit. Whew. Okay. All right. Let me shake this off for a second. God, I need you to come in and do what you do because you already know me. So, all right. So, first, I wanted to give honor to God, who's all who's head of my life, to all his people in the house. I want to reverence the man of the house who, in his absence, um, PM, you guys call him Pastor Mike, but I call him PM. Okay. Um, so, I know he's watching. So, PML, I'm holding it down. Okay. I'm holding it down to the best of my ability. Um, I wanted to say, <clears throat> as I see that I might be coming before you all um, often, especially this month, that there are many things that you might not receive from me, um, but there is one thing that you can always expect from me, and it is to be hot. Now, I know you're thinking like, hot, what is that like? No, not in that way, but honest, open, and transparent with God's word and how he wants me to impart it to you all, okay? So please stand. Go to your Bibles to Judges chapter 6, 11 through 14. There you will find the word of the Lord speaking to Gideon. I will be reading from the ESV version. Now there is something special about Gideon. He's the fifth judge. And out of all the judges besides Samson, um, in total, he has three chapters totaling 100 verses telling us his story. And in the first verse, we see Gideon minding his own business. Um, and as young people say, minding the business that pays him, right? He was staying out the way. Don't, mm -mm, I'm good. Um, Gideon was beating wheat to hide it from the Midianites, a.k.a. the bullies. Um, and he was not really good at being in the spotlight um, or letting people notice him. He was able to do what he needed to do and go home. That's what I could imagine. Um, I could imagine that Gideon was an introvert. Uh, he kept to himself and, you know, I could go further and say that he didn't have that it factor. 
um, that people would notice. So it's easy for him to be overlooked by those that are more extroverted, that have that je ne sais quoi, that thing, you know, that are stronger, smarter, that just, that has that thing that people would more so gravitate to than somebody who's an introvert, shy, and you know, I just wanna mind my business and go home. Now, Judges 6, chapter 11 reads, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth at Ophrah, which belonged to Jehoash the Azburite, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midians. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do I not send you? Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us as we embark on your word. Lord, I pray that you hide me behind your cross and use me as a vessel only like you can, dear Father Lord. We, I pray that you help me complete my assignment skillfully and effectively today and that your words that come off my lips edify your people and that it may land on good soil. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. I want to use a subject today called, I am good soil. I am good soil, okay? Look to your neighbor and say, I'm good soil, okay? We see in the text, the angel of the Lord visiting Gideon at Ophrah. Now, back in these times, the physical presence of the Lord um, was a physical manifestation. Now, this encounter that Gideon had with the angel of the Lord wasn't uncommon. As we can, we can see this with Moses and Elijah and many other people in the Old Testament. I would like to call this what Gideon had was a theophany, a visible manifestation to humankind of God. Gideon coming from what he thinks is the weakest clan, um, being very low, he felt inadequate because of these many things. And it could be because of his past mistakes, his you know past addictions, um, his past failures, that he wrote himself off as not being good soil. And we see this when he says to the angel of the Lord, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm the weakest of my clan. Yeah. Even after the angel spoke to him and said, oh, mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. And when I think about this, I'm thinking about, man, how many times have we have written ourselves off because we thought we were unworthy of yeah. being good soil? And when we think of good soil, when you think of soil, it's, it's muddy, it's dirty. If it gets wet, it's nasty. You want to go and wash it off. But when you look at it from a God's perspective, it's a playground where he can plant good seed. Yes. And it goes deep down inside because when something has to, when something is sprouted, it, it, it has to go down first, deep, deep down to make sure that the roots are in stable position so that it can sprout up. And so when God had, when God had told Gideon, go mighty men of valor, Gideon was like, mm, cool, I don't really trust you. You know, I, I know what you're saying, I hear what you're saying as we have plenty of times before, but he wasn't really sure. And so he needed God to reassure him. And so there's many times that God will have called us to go on assignment. He has told us to start that business. He told us to go ahead and, and you know, get married and, and just different things. And it's just like, God, I'm not really sure. I need reassurance. And it was three times that God reassured Gideon that stuck out to me. And when God is pursuing you, he's like, I don't mind reassuring you. 
Because even though you're afraid, you're still willing to move forward afraid. And sometimes you got to move afraid when God has called you to do something. And so he said, I don't mind reassuring you because I'm looking at your heart. While man looks on the outward, I look on the inward. And I know that you're willing to do my deed. So if I have to reassure you a couple of times, that's fine. Because I know you're going to go. And so when Gideon decided... He said, you know what, I'm going to partner with God. I really, you know, I'm afraid, you know, I, I have this weakness, and that weakness could be addiction. There could be drugs, porn. Um, it could be, what do you call it? Like going in the same cycles over and over where you feel like I'm just unworthy. I'm so unworthy, God, and I just, I can't. And as I stand here today, I even told myself and I wrestled with PM. I said, why did you leave? Because you could have been here today. I discounted myself as being good soil because I'm like, God, I'm nervous. I might not get up here and say the right things. I might not, I, I, I might miss my notes. I might miss my mark. And it's just like, it's not you that makes you good soil. I'm like, okay, it's, it's not me. It's God that makes me good soil because of his grace and his mercy. And me being weak is, is a sign of God, like, I can use her. Bet. Good. Let's go. And I'm like, okay. So when you feel lowly, when you feel weak, God is like, all right, now I know you're afraid, so I can move you behind me. Now I can go and do what I need to do for you. It's like, okay, God, I got you. I hear you. I hear you. So Gideon wrote himself off because he was weak, low self-esteem, and he thought he was, the lack of faith called him to discount himself over and over again. God would never call you to the unknown without letting you know, I'm going to be with you every step of the way. And it's just like, okay, we have to remember, God is not going to call me. Just like he said with Abraham, go to where I'm going to send you. Okay, well, where is that? But God still was going to, he was still with him. He was walking with him. Even when he calls you to unknown tar charted territory, he's always beside you. It may not come in the way that you want it. You may not hear him audibly, but he will have people that will come and say, girl, you're on the right path. Girl, this makes sense. Why are you up there speaking? It makes sense. And it's just like, oh, okay, well, God, I guess this is the right path. And he's just like, yes, don't discount yourself because I called you to be good soil. And it's like, okay, God, good soil. I have to keep telling myself good soil. I have to write it on the mirror, good soil. And even sometimes like Mark 9 and 24, when the father of the sick child said, God, I believe I'm good soil, but not consistently. So help me with my unbelief. Help me with my unbelief in what you called me. You called me a mighty woman, right? You called me a Proverbs 31 woman. You called me a business owner. You called me a parent. You called me a wife. You called me a husband. God, help me to see that because sometimes I, consist I can't consistently see it. But I know that I am that. But the enemy within tells me that I am not. And then the people outside that don't like me speak against me and tell me that I'm not. So sometimes I'm conflicted because I know what the word says, but I'm also battling with what I think of myself yeah. and what others think of me because they sometimes, well, not sometimes, all the time, people can see what you are right. before right. you do. Right. So what they'll do is they'll try to stifle it and say, oh, she conceded. Right. But then that's how you come. Yeah, I'm conceited. You know what? I'm good because you don't know the many years that I fought to see oh, the beauty God. in what God has called me to be. You don't know how many years I fought to look in the mirror and say, I'm worthy. I'm good soil. God loves me. You don't understand that. Okay, it's cool. Fine. That's cool. I got it. And, and what God told me, you better stop answering to names that don't have anything to do with where God has taken you. If they call you Sarai, keep walking because I'm Sarah. If they call you Saul, keep walking because I'm Paul. I'm no longer that version, that person, because God has called me to be good soil. When God called Gideon, Gideon wasn't a mighty man of valor, but it was until the angel of God that prophesied and spoke into what God wanted him to be. So he was able to move forward and walk into what God has called him to be. So as we see in his story, it wasn't in the beginning that he was a mighty man. It was when God said... 
mighty man. That's when he began to be that. And he had to walk in. And as we see in his story in the three chapters, that he's slowly progressing to be this mighty man of valor. And even though when he has to stop and ask God, God, are you sure? Okay, well, let me place this down and I need the water to soak it up. He's just like, all right, cool, because I know who you are. I've seen you. I formed you before you were even born. I know the plans that I have for you. And when you think about that, you, God has already calculated everything for me. And so I don't have to worry about it. And so when people speak to you and they call you things that are not what God has called you, you got to say, I'm sorry, I'm in my Deuter Deuteronomy 28 season. Okay, you don't know the seeds that I've sown, the tears that I've cried, the people that try to come up against me, the jobs that I've lost, the people that try to stop me from doing what I needed to do because God has said that I'm good soil. So when you think I'm boasting, it's not. It, I serve a God, right, that can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I think or wish of. And it's like when you know who you are when you're walking, when you company yourself with God, you move different, you walk different. So when God says you are a mighty man of value, you better walk up straight with your back, shoulder squared, and be like, I'm, I'm, I know who I am. If God has called you to be a businesswoman, you better walk into those banks and know that you got those loans. If God has called you to have, be a homeowner, you better walk into the place and buy your furniture. God has already made a way for everything that you need. He's already made the plans, the finances. It's already in your bank account. You think about, well, how am I going to do this? He didn't tell you. He didn't need you to have all this. He said, when you go, I will have somebody that will underwrite everything that you need. All you got to do is show up. But you have to walk into what I called you. And as there's a lot of creatives, when you're like battling with what God has called you and you keep seeing it and there's a vision and you're like, I know I was born to create. I know I was born to do God's will in an artistic form, but it's not panning out the way that I thought. It's not going the way that I thought it should go. And so God is like, don't worry about all that. I called you to be this. I called you to go out into the world and to draw in my people in this form. So why are you worrying about what's working and what's not? Because now you're moving in your own strength and not mine. And there's so many times that we move in his strength and not our own, and we lose sight of who God has called us to be, that mighty man or woman of valor. And as I stand here, I wrestled. I stayed up till probably 4 o'clock, and I'm like, God, I just don't know. I 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 said, I don't want to be stiff. I don't want to not be in my word. I don't, I don't want to be looking here when I know in me, and there's something in the pit of me where God is saying, I'm calling you to deeper. I'm calling you to more because you're good soil. And the more you keep quenching the spirit, you're operating in yourself. And I'm like, God, help me. Because what people have put on me, I've digested that. And I see that. I see myself as a little girl that's scared, that I can't stand up here because I'm not as educated in, in having seminary teachings. You know, I don't feel that... I can be like PM. And God is like, you worrying about the wrong stuff because I've called you. Your lineage is what? There are people in your family, when you look at it, they didn't have schooling, but they had my anointing. Yes. I clothed them. So when God clothes them, it's different. I don't care because a person with God's anointing can surpass a person with all the education in the world. And when PM told me that, I said, okay, God, all right, bet, I'm ready. I'm ready for war. And there would be some battles that you go through that should overtake you, but it doesn't. Why? Because God has clothed himself over you, and you're walking in his anointing and not yours. And so when we look at Gideon, Gideon is, is still wrestling, and he's just like, God, I don't know. I don't know what you need me to do. And if you are who you say that you are, I need reassurance still. And God reassures him each and every time. And, and God says, because you're good soil, you are going to win. This battle is not going to overtake you. What you're facing right now is not going to overtake you. 
Because why? Because you're good soil. And, and Gideon wouldn't have overtaken the Midianites if he wasn't obedient to God's call. When you're not obedient to God's call, there's things that you cannot accomplish. There's things that you will not win. There are things that will not go your way because God is like, well, if you want to sit there and do it on your, yourself, that's fine. I'm going to sit back because I know what's going to happen. But until you come back to me and say, yes, God, I partner with you, even though I'm afraid, even though I feel inadequate, even though I'm shy, even though I'm an introvert. God is like, when you come back to me, everything's going to work out in your favor. Everything you need is, 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 is going to be there. And it's just like, God is not, man, he's not going to lie to you. He's not going to lie. And when I think about it, I'm like, okay, God, I came to L.A. I was minding my business like Gideon. I didn't want, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't want to come to family church. I didn't. Sometimes you got to be honest because God already knows. God, I don't want to work at this job. God, I don't, I don't really want to do this because I know what comes with it. But God is like, you're good soil. And I'm going to put you in places that's uncomfortable, in uncharted territory, so that you can grow. Because why? You're good soil. The longer you stay in something that's for you, you stifle yourself. You delay every blessing. And so Gideon was just like, okay, if, if I have to. And God said, even when you're afraid to move because of what family thinks and what your friends think, I'm still going to be with you. I've already calculated that. And so when you get to that place of, I don't care what nobody thinks, if I got to look stupid, if I look foolish, if I look like I lost my mind, I'm going to do it. Because why? Because I know who God is. Yeah. I know a man that will go out his way, that he will leave the 99 for me. Each and every time, every time he will leave that 99 for me. Because why? I'm good soil. If you don't take anything from me today, Take that you are good soil for everything God has said to you, whether it was in a dream, whether it was somebody who came and prophesied, who came and confirmed what God has already told you. You are good soil. Don't leave out of here the same way that you came in. You're good soil. And even though, you know, you may fall sometimes because we're not perfect, right? You're still good soil. Why? Because God has called you to be good soil. It's one thing. God told me I was walking in my place. I said, man, God, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He said, don't be talking to the great I am like he ain't. So, I said, God, run it back, run it back, run it back, run it back. What? Don't be talking to the great I am like he ain't. God. I said, that's, that slapped me. The great I am. And it's just like, well, God. You said you would, but I don't. He said, but I, the great I am. I am. I am everything that you need. God, I'm kind of running low, but I am your bank. I am the lender. I will touch somebody to make sure that you have what you need this month. And you're like, okay, God, but I don't, but I am. And sometimes you got to check yourself. Okay, Char, he is. You ain't. That's what you got to tell yourself. You right, you right, you right. He is, I ain't. So it makes you move different. I can walk differently. My confidence is differently. Because why? I ain't, but he is. <laughs> okay, okay. I can do this thing because God has called me. And he said that I am good soil. And the more that I realize that I'm good soil because of him and not because of me, I can accomplish all that God has given me. Everything that I've seen, everything that I know, everything that people has been speaking to me down through the years, you are good soil. And know that you're not, but he is. So you can do everything. And don't allow your good soil to become dry land. I had to think about that. I said, God, okay, well, what, what do you mean? And, and Gideon, after he won, after God called him mighty man of valor, what did he do? He went back to his old ways, what he was familiar with after he won. And sometimes you'll be like, God, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. You know, I've been in my word. I've been, um, you know, fasting to hear from you and what you wanted me to do. 
And now that I've gotten what I needed, I'm good. So I go back now, I've allowed my good soil to be dry land. And now God is like, I didn't want to have to do this. And I'm like, God, but you said that you, I guess I'm still going to be with you. But now I have to take my anointing off. My because you went back. Now, before I didn't mind it, right? I didn't mind because I knew your, I was looking at your heart. But because I gave you so much, you started to shift me. You started to think that you could do it on your own. And so now I'm not a priority anymore. And then you're like, well, God, I went and did this, bought this car, but I can't pay the car note. Yeah, because I didn't tell you to go get it. <laughs> I didn't tell you to do that. I told you to go get this car and that you will pay this car off in a year and then you'll be able to go get this one. But you decided to go get this Mercedes when I told you to go ahead and get this Honda. And you're like, well, God, but you said I'm good soil. Yeah, for the Honda. <laughs> for the Honda right now. And sometimes we try to jump ahead when God has said, no, I need you to go on this path. And God will make your crooked path straight. But you got to stay on the straight path. You can't turn aside away from him. And in the book of Judges, we always see that when everything is going good. God, I'm good. I'm good. And then I met Tyrone. He's looking good. He's fine. I'm like, baby, my edges are like, we're about to shimmy shim. And God is like, that's nice. But I didn't call him to be your man. You're like, but God, did you? I didn't call you. I just told you to bring him to church. I didn't tell you to do nothing else. And you're like, well, God, I thought, no, you thought wrong. So now what I've called you to do, you're turning it totally other way around i need you to keep your focus on me keep your end in view and when you keep your end in view your ob your obedience will stay intact and then everything you need will follow you don't have to worry about robbing peter to pay paul when paul don't got it now you're looking for jimmy to help you pay and jimmy's just like well you didn't borrow from me now you tapped out god is like don't worry about all that peter palm james everybody look i got it i am I am. Yeah. Oh, and now you don't want to come to church because you're mad because Jesus didn't come through. God didn't come through. God said, I did come through. You was trying to do your own thing. I've been there. But just because I showed you a little bit, you decided I'm good. I don't need him anymore. And so when you think about Gideon, Gideon was inadequate. Gideon felt like he was undeserving of God's blessing. He felt that he was not good soil until the angel came and prophesied and said, mighty men of valor. And, and, and it did kind of intrigue him a little bit because it rang. What's in you, when somebody speaks to you, it's like a magnet in you. You kind of rise to it. When PM said, well, I'm going to need you to speak. And I'm like, well, no. But then a little bit of the Holy Spirit in me was like, no, because that's what you are. And you're like, okay, it's already planted. God already planted the seed. But he'll wait till you're mature enough to, for you to know that you're good soil. So now you move different. Your confidence is different. Your stride is different. Your talk is different. Your walk is different. The way you look at things is different. You no longer have the desire to do things of the world because you know who your God is. You step different. And when you continue to know who God has called you to be, you don't answer to nothing else other than what God has called you to be. You don't answer to those things that used to intrigue you, that used to satisfy you. It's crazy. I had um, a friend call me and was just like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, I'm sorry, who is this? I am so sorry. I really wish I knew who this was. And they're, just, they're trying to you know, jog my memory. I said, I'm sorry, but my memory doesn't need to be jogged because that's no longer me. I told you you would want me before I got here. I didn't know where I was going to be, but now that I'm here, I can no longer entertain you. 
Because if I entertain you, then that calls me to shift focus and that makes me lose out on what God has called me to do. And I can't afford it in this season. I can't afford it. There are certain things that you cannot afford. You gotta stop playing because time is winding yeah, down. Yeah, Young yeah. people, time is winding down. I know we hate to hear it. I got time. No, we don't. No, I do. No, you don't. Because you see the things of the world that's happening. When God is calling you to be good soil, he's calling you for a reason in a season for a time like this. And you have to answer it. And when, don't allow people to project their fears on you. No, oh, no, 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 no. If they say, oh, well, it couldn't be me going back to school. Well, I'm sorry you're fearful, but I'm fearful and wonderfully made. Okay? I can do exceedingly, abundantly. I serve a God who will, who does, and who will always provide, and that will strengthen me to get to what I need to do and allow me to see this thing through because he's called me because I'm what? Are you, tell me what you are. Can you tell me, are you? Good soil. When you walk out of here, I need you to know that you're. Good soil. When somebody says, oh, girl, it couldn't be me, but you say, I'm. Good soil. When that man says, oh, bro, you being boastful, and you know what, you're not going to make it, but you're going to say. Good soil. Right. I'm good soil for every single thing. Yes. I don't care for what it looks like. Yeah. I don't care if I got to drive this busted up car. God already told me, I'm about to be driving to something nice in the next six months because the year is almost done. So, baby, don't worry about me. But when you do see me driving, don't be like, yo, how you doing? No, remember. <laughs> remember what you said. I'm sorry. It's only a two-seater, and it's only me in here and the Holy Spirit. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. So when you leave out of here, know that you are good soil. And that you're deserving of it, every single thing, every single thing. And as I stand here, I'm telling myself, Trini, you're good soil. Each time you get up here, God is going to equip you. God is going to allow you to, to move in his spirit. You're no longer going to be afraid. Because where God is calling you, it's time to gird yourself. You got to gird yourself. So that when you come up against that obstacle or you go to that job that you don't like and that girl's running her mouth and you're like, God, I just, <sighs> Holy Spirit, activate, <laughs> activate, you know, God is like, don't worry, don't worry, sweetheart, I got you because you're good soil. I'm already planning your exit for you. You don't got to talk to nobody sideways. You just come there happy, joyful. Why? Because God said, I'm about to leave anyway. <laughs> okay? God says, I'm a business owner. So he's already making preparations for me so that I can go ahead and be my own business owner. Okay? I don't got to worry about all this. That nine to five, I don't know what it is anymore. <laughs> Couldn't be me. <laughs> because I serve a God who is the great I am. Okay? <sighs> Lord, you're so amazing. You're so amazing. God, we're good soil. And when PM says greater deliverance is going to have a new building with ample amount of parking, mm -hmm. you better know your church is good soil and start inviting people to come see your new church. Let them show you, allow them to see how you praise God, how your church gets down. Because God is calling greater deliverance good soil. Mm -hmm. I, I, may, I may have not been here from the beginning, but there's an anointing that sits on this house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you don't move what that anointing is, you're going to miss out. Yeah. If you're stifled and you make this ministry like that, God is going to have to be like, you know, hey, I'm going to need you to go ahead and just, I don't think this ministry for you no more. Yeah in the most kindest way because greater deliverance is going to move whether you're here or not and i know and i know god 
is going to equip every single person in here with the thing that they need to allow this ministry to flourish in each department. Because God said this is good soil. We are literally standing on the grounds of those that have prayed, been on their knees, having those fastings and just praying those, sh those shut-ins. We are good soil because our leader is good soil, because our God is good soil. So when you have a good leader, know that everything in you is planted from somewhere that's good because it's coming from the head. The oil drips down. And trust me, I want to be where the oil is dripping because I need everything for my pocket. Okay? Everything that has my name on it, I need it. I'm not leaving no crumbs. One at all. And know that you are good soil wherever you go, whether you're in here or not. You're good soil. Whether you had a great day or a bad day, you're good soil because God has called you. Whether you're at the job that you don't like, you're good soil. Whether you're in a relationship where you feel like, God, I don't know, I don't know, you're good soil. Don't let anybody down talk you. Don't allow the enemy, when he's too loud, that means he's too high. You need to bring him back low. Okay? So please stand. Please stand. Please stand. PM, I know you're watching. I hope I made you proud. Okay, I know I don't do all that hooping and hollering. It's, it's, it's coming. It's coming. I hear it. Spirit of the living God, I just thank you for today. I thank you for this word and allowing us to know that we are good soil for your works, that we are good soil to see the things that you need us to do, dear Father Lord. I pray that each and every person that walks out of this door that doesn't leave from your presence knows that they are good soil. Whatever they're holding in, dear Father God, allow them to know that they're good soil, that they're the mighty woman or man of valor that you've called, that they are going to win the battle, that they're going to be able to triumph over the things that they feel that they're losing right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray over each and every one of them, dear God, because you know all the things that they were, were what we're going through. And I just ask that you just come in and that you continue to speak to us, dear Father God that we are good soil and that we know it. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. amen. Thank you. If you know your good soil, I want you to produce like a good soil does. Begin to give God some praise. If you're good soil, it knows how to yield good things. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. Before I let you go, that was a powerful word. If there's anyone that stands in need of prayer, um, I'm asking if you will come. And I ask if the speaker would join me because the anointing is on her. And if there's someone that is in need of prayer, you heard that message uh, and you feel like you've been denying living beneath your privilege, you haven't been exercising what you should be, you're understanding your rightful place, realizing who you are. Do you know who you are? She said, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you really realize that? Do you know who you are? Did you understand that life and death is in the power of the tongue? It's what you speak. Some of us speak negative over ourselves, and we invite others with their negativity. But we got to shake that thing off. You're going to have haters. Amen. But you got to learn to love yourself through it all. God loved me. Amen. So why should I be worried about what you're saying? So if there's one, the altar is open, and I'm asking you to come at this time. Amen. We have one coming. We have one coming. Amen. If he left the 99 for one, surely this is a time such as this is the appointed time. Amen. Amen. Is there another? They're coming. They're coming. I'm going to give it back into the hands of the speaker. Amen. And we're going to go as she's led. Amen.
to Father God, can you give me a, a napkin, please? God, I just thank you. As we're here today right now, I pray for these two, dear Father God. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Holy Spirit, Lord. There's a reason that you brought them up here today, dear Father God. You know what they need. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Those that didn't come up, if you feel that you need a prayer at your seat, just go ahead and lift your hands in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for your anointing, your covering, dear Father God. Use them as you see fit as they walk out these doors. God, whatever they're battling in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. Sometimes the load is too heavy for us to even speak it, God. But you said you know the words that we speak even when we can't even articulate in the name of Jesus. God, I bless your name. As we come to you lowly, dear Father God. You are worthy of every single praise. You are worthy of everything within us because we are good soil. These two women are good soil, God. You know how hard it is to be a mother, to be a wife, to be a sister, to be a friend, to be a best friend, to be a daughter. God, you know when they are making it, dear Father God. You know what you have to stretch for them, dear Father God. Sometimes they don't want to do it, God, but that's when you said, I am. I am the strength that you need. I am the provision that you're seeking. I am the comfort that's going to wrap you in my arms. God, I pray for these two women right now in the name of Jesus. As greater deliverance is surrounding them in an agreement with what they need, that you are already going to do it. That it's already done in the name of Jesus. They just can't see it right now in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God. We bless you, God. We thank you for these times, these battles that we're fighting that is spiritual, that we can't even see with our eyes. God, we need you to go on our behalf and fight for us like only you can. Hide us behind you, dear Father God. Allow us to unload this burden, this baggage in the name of Jesus. Because you said that you are all things, that we can do all things. And right now, God, these women need a renew. They need a strength exchange in the name of Jesus right now. And I bless and touch and I speak over each and every person in this house right now that is struggling to see that they're good soil, that they're struggling to see that they are the mighty man or woman of valor that you've called. God, allow their eyes to be open when they look in that mirror to see that I am good. Dear Father, God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. God, allow them to see you. Allow them to see themselves as you see them as worthy of everything good, God. I thank you. God, I thank you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you right now. I thank you, right now. I thank you for this house. Thank you for the pastor, dear Father God, for his obedience, dear Father God, to take in the mantle when he could have said, no, God, I thank you for the God that we serve, God. God, we serve you because you're great and we are not. We are weak, but with you, we are strong. We can walk upright in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you for the children. I thank you for greater deliverance, children, as they go back to school. Anybody that tries to come up upon that campus, they got to turn around, dear Father God. Any shooter that they think they're going to step, they are not because of the God they serve. The prayers that are prayed over them when they go out every morning in the name of Jesus, we cover them in prayer. We cover in the name of Jesus. 
any type of suicidal thoughts, any type of depression that our children are battling, we speak against it in the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Anybody that tries to bully them, we speak against it in the name of Jesus because they are yours. You've called them. They're on the wings and the prayers of their family, of their mothers, of their fathers that are planted in greater deliverance because greater deliverance has the oil, dear Father God. You are not going to allow us to move, to not see ourselves the way that you see us, God. Everything we got is because you gave it. And everything we don't got is because you didn't give it. And we thank you for withholding from us because you said you would never withhold anything that's good or great. So just because I don't have it, that means you don't need me to have it right now. It's not right now for me to have it. But God, when I do, you will see that I'm equipped, that I'm a mighty man or woman of valor, that I'm good soil, that you can entrust me. My obedience is intact, that I will walk with you, dear Father God, that I will not turn back to my old ways. God, you've called me to break generational curses. You called me not to be an addict. You've called me to walk in your way. I'm not my mother. I'm not my father. I'm not my grandparents. I'm called who you've called me to be, dear Father God. I can stand up straight because it's you. It's not me. It's never me. It's never us. It's you. God, I just thank you for each and every person in this house and online that they feel your spirit in their place. Feel the room, dear Father God. Let them know that it's time to come home. That attitude that you're battling with, time to come home. That's just the trick of the enemy. That's the trick of the enemy trying to get you to forfeit what God has called you to have in the kingdom. You got to let go of that spirit. That's just a spirit fighting against you, and you don't even know it. You don't even know it in the name of Jesus. That prideful spirit, set it down, set it down, set it down, set it down. You're going to make it. You're making it. Dear Father God, and we thank you, and we bless you, and we honor you because you're worthy of everything great. God, and we pray where Pastor Mark is at, dear Father God, that you touch him. Touch his mind, dear Father God. Touch his body. Renew him right now in the name of Jesus. He's given so much and asked for so little back. But God, that you will give him all that he thinks, all that he needs, the people that need to be in place to help him continue to thrive this ministry as you saw fit for him when you called him to be good soil. We pray over where he's at, God. We thank you for your love and your mercy. And all minds say amen. Amen. All minds say, I'm good soil. soil. You turn to your neighbor and say, I'm good soil. soil. Tell them and say, you're good soil. soil. And that means we good soil. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Amen.